لئن شكرتم لأزيدنكم ولئن كفرتم إن عذابي لشديد Hello Muslim friends of the world. Thailand has a Muslim village floating on the sea with an Indonesian feel. The village name is Kopani, pronounced in Thailand, or known as Kopanyi. This is a fishing village in Phang Na Province, Thailand. The floating island lies in the shadow of a high limestone rock formation in a sheltered bay at sea. Kopanyi is about half an hour by boat from the Phang Na Pier in Phang Na Bay. The village is also easy to reach from Phuket and Krabi. According to history, Kopanyi village was built first by three fishermen families of Javanese descent around 200 years ago. Then, they grew until today the village population is more than 1,680 people and 400 families. The majority of the population also adheres to Islam. The origin of Koh Panyi village began when the three families were looking for a location to catch fish. From Java, they followed the Malaysian coastline until they reached Thai waters and found an island in Panga province. They then climbed to a hill to raise a flag to signal other fishermen to join them. Since then, many people have come and joined in until they finally built a floating village on the water. Koh Panyi, Javanese Muslim village in Thailand. As time went by, and many tourists came to Koh Panyi to make it a tourist destination, the Koh Panyi residents of Javanese descent obtained ownership rights to the land even though they were foreigners. Slowly but surely, Koh Panyi now has facilities like a normal village. Koh Panyi also has a school, hospital, cemetery, market, museum, and a simple hotel for tourists. The center of the village is a concrete structure that connects dozens of souvenir shops and houses. Each small shop along the pathway sells shell trinkets and batik t-shirts. One of the highlights of Koh Panyi village for tourists is the three floating football fields. The pitches are made of wood and were built after the 1986 World Cup. Their source of income is fishing. But, along with the many tourists who come, they also thought of utilizing the tourists as their source of income. Thailand is one of the countries in Southeast Asia where the majority of the population is Buddhist. Muslims in the land of white elephants are only around 15% and most of them are spread in the southern provinces of the country, specifically in Padani, Yalak, Narathiwat, Songkhlistan, Islam arrived in Thailand around the 10th or 11th century brought by Arab and Indian traders. There are also those who say that Islam entered Thailand through the Samudra Pasai Kingdom in Aceh. There is also another opinion which states that Islam entered Thailand even before the Thai Kingdom was founded, namely in the 9th century. This can be seen from historical facts, such as ancient paintings depicting Arab Muslims in Ayutthaya, an area in Thailand and also the success of the Arabs in establishing the Patani Islamic Dala, which is proof that Islam existed before the Thai Kingdom was founded and came to power. According to Asep Ahmad Hidayat in his book Social History of Malay Ethnic Minority Muslims in the Archipelago, Patani Thailand, Singapore, Moro Filipino, and Timor-Leste, the southernmost region of Thailand was originally a sovereign Malay Islamic kingdom, namely the Patani Malay Sultanate which is estimated to include five regions, Patani, Yala, Narathiwat, Songkhla, and the northernmost parts of modern Malaysia, Kelantan, Kedah, and Perlis in Terengganu. According to the Hikayatnya Patani text, the Patani Sultanate was ruled by three dynasties, namely the Sri Wangsa, the first Kelantan dynasty, and the second Kelantan dynasty. The Patani people themselves call the Patani Sultanate the Patani Darussalam Sultanate or Patani Raya, in its golden age, 
the Padani Sultanate emerged as the greatest Malay Islamic empire on the Malay Peninsula. Padani Raya at that time was a famous and prosperous port city, ruled by kings who are described in history as having regional seat power. Since the arrival of Islam in the archipelago, archipelago, the land of Padani has been visited by nations. In the 14th century AD, the city of Padani Harbor had developed into the kingdom of Padani Raya. The Padani Sultanate reached the peak of its glory when it was ruled by Sultanas, female kings, namely Raja Hijau, 1584-1616 AD, Raja Bairu, 1616-1624 AD, Raja Ungu, 1624-1635 AD, and Raja Cunning, 1635-1688 AD. During the reign of these female kings, the Padani Kingdom reached prosperity as a result of trade relations with European and East Asian nations, the Netherlands, Portugal, England, China, and Japan. At that time, Padani land was not only visited by Malay traders, but also traders from various nations, European, Arab, Persian, Jewish, Turkish, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Indonesian nations, and others. This reality shows that the Patani Malay Sultanate has demonstrated a fairly advanced economic level. With this capital, the Malay Sultanate of Patani built a Malay Islamic culture that was distinctive and advanced at that time. He not only plays an active role in politics and trade throughout the region but has succeeded in establishing an area that has become the center of the development of Islam in Malay lands. Throughout the 16th century, the names of scholars and spreaders of Islam emerged, such as Sheikh Sayyafiyadun al-Abbasi, Sheikh Muhammad Said Barzisa, and Sheikh Gambak Abdul Mubin who spread Islam in the land of Padani at that time. Then other preachers appeared, such as Sheikh Faki Ali al-Malbari, Sheikh Ali Faki al-Fatani, Sheikh Abdul Jalil al-Fatani, and others. Towards the beginning of the 18th century AD until throughout the 19th century Padani continued to act as a center of Islamic culture or civilization and even as a center for Malay literary activities with Islamic elements. Throughout this century, Padani has produced great scholars who are not only famous in Malay but also in Arabia, Turkey and North Africa. At that time Padani received the nickname Mirror of Mecca which was visited by many Muslim students from Sri Lanka, Burma, Myanmar, Cambodia, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malay countries, and throughout the archipelago such as Sumatra, especially Aceh, Sulawesi, Kalimantan, Java, and Brunei. In developing their preaching, the ulama used the Pandak Educational Institution as a base for their activities. Among the oldest and quite well-known lodges actively carrying out Dawa in Padani are Pandak Dala, Burman, Semala, Dual, Kota, Jarasik, and Telak Monak. These cottages have been visited not only by domestic students but also from abroad. Towards the middle of the 19th century AD, the territory of the Patani Sultanate had become a victim of conquest by the Kingdom of Siam, Muang Thai slash Thailand. The process began in 1786 AD when the army of the Kingdom of Siam conquered the army of the Patani Sultanate and controlled the entire territory of this Islamic kingdom. As a result of this defeat, the Patani nation received war punishment from the Siam Kingdom in the form of cruelty and persecution. Sir Francis Light, who had just arrived in Pulau Penning, wrote a letter on September 12, 1786 to the Governor General Lord Cornwallis in India reporting the atrocities of the Thai, Siamese, army who colonized Patani. According to the report, Innocent men, old women and children had been tortured, tied up and laid out in a large field, and then trampled to death by elephants. According to records in 1786 AD, this cruelty caused 15,000 of the 90,000 Padani residents to flee along the Muda River, Kedah on the Malay Peninsula. 
As many as 4,000 Pat Ani Malays were taken prisoner and taken to Bangkok as forced laborers to dig river canals. Meanwhile, the palace and the Pat Ani Sultanate Mosque were burned by the Royal Thai Army, destroyed, nothing remained, only the mosque known as the Gresik or Kruasike Mosque in Amphusiburi, Pat Ani Province, 